All right, Billy's waving at me. Billy uh, Staples. Staples now! What are you waving at me for? Waving through the window. I had a very strange dream the other <laughs> night. Yeah. All right, what did you have, bro? Well, it just it was very strange. It was the second time that my my dad died when I was very young. Uh huh. And uh, it was the second time he actually appeared to me in a dream, speaking to me. Really? Yeah. And it was. Now you, I mean, you were you were old enough when your dad died to remember him very well. I was eleven. Okay. So, sorry. Right. Sure. You had a good relationship with him. Oh yeah, I do have memories of him, but it was I forget exactly where I was at the time. But I remember all of a sudden, my father was laying prone, and he sat up into a half-sitting position and looked at me, and he was like... He sat up? He sat up. Well, was, where was he at at the time? Was he in the coffin? or? I, I cannot recall. I, I don't remember exactly yeah. you know, where he was and stuff, but I just, it was weird because it was a different dream, and then it just came into this. And he just sat up immediately and goes, I've never been happier, and I've never been happier since I've died. Really? Uh, so he's dead in the dream. Yeah. He's so coming. finally, after all these years, he's putting things together in the afterlife. Things are starting to click for him there. I guess so. <laughs> but he just he goes, I've never been happier. Death is not all. Um, d death is good, you know. And he's saying, and I'm like, well, wait a second. I'm playing like, I feel like the little kid again. Well, what about me? I was like, you know, I was, like I said to him, I said, I was 11 when you left me. That's very selfish. He goes, did you know you were dreaming? You really thought you were talking to him? Or? At the time, yeah. yeah. So, so you're I... having this conversation. Oh, man. All right, so you say, I was 11 when you died. What happened? Yeah, I'm going, that's very selfish that you're happy now, but you left me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's just, you know, I guess. And uh, he goes, that's out of my control, but I just want you to know I've never been happier. And I was like, wow. wow. Was that the extent of it? Yeah. Now, what's the... your belief system? You think he really visited you in a dream? Believe in a, I never really did, but when I went to see John Edwards that time, that, yeah. and he said to me, he goes, you may not get um, messages like he gets, but yeah. our dead relatives appear to us in ways that we never realize, uh -huh. that they just could come in a dream, and it, a phone that rings for no reason, um, something that goes off like an alarm clock goes off but all by itself for no reason. Uh -huh. right, what do you mean a phone ring? You know, every time there's a hang-up no. on your house, you're supposed to believe a dead person's calling you? <laughs> This is a fake hang-up, isn't it? This is a fake Hello, hang Grandma! Up. I love you. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, no, it is. This, this here, no, it's me, Fez. I, just, <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to grab some water. He's calling me Grandma again. <laughs> hang on. So, now, what are you saying, Billy? That, uh, that you got visited somewhere? I believe it. I honestly do believe it. This is the, like a second time it had happened in, within the past year or two. That I've gotten these. Uh, wow. A, a dream with my father. So your dad's doing really good in heaven. That's a good thing to know. It really is. It was pretty it took comforting. Took him a while of really right. getting on his feet. And right. But now he's established. Yeah. I never even realized it to just now, but the two, it's been, the only two contacts I've had with him have been after the John Edwards thing. Again with the John Edwards. Well, he I, wants, I see that he's opening up his John Edwards story. Right. Because, you know, notice I haven't bet either time. Uh huh. All right, Billy, John Edwards is this. Uh, what the hell is this? What would you even call that? A psychic? I guess a medium, medium. or... Oh, he's a large. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he he's communicates... a medium when he first came on. He communicates with the dead. Now, what uh, channel is he on? I believe he's on two now. All right. He he's used to on be two. on the sci-fi channel. But it, yeah, yeah, he's moved into the, the main channels. And he comes on like, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. And he yells at people whose family is dead. He'll just yell at them. Oh. Listen! Listen to me. <laughs> Are you getting this? And people are going, no. Listen. I'll just make them feel bad about themselves. All right, so when did you go see him? About three years ago. Um, I did the, uh, I did when he was on the Sci-Fi Channel. I did the pilot with him. And I How did, did you get that gig? Believe it or not, through the Internet. There was, they placed an ad on the Internet. They were looking for people. They were still testing the show. And uh -huh. I, and I were did... you in a chat room? No, it was, uh, huh. I get these stupid emails of all casting things all the time. Oh, I some, see. some are legit, some are not. This turned out to be legit. Well, too legit to quit? <laughs> all right, let me ask you this, Billy. Mm -hmm. You believe in the guy? Yeah. I'll tell you this from watching the show, if Fez and I know a, uh, a psychic hustler, like they all are, it's not legit. I didn't believe it going in. Ron. Who'd you talk to? 
Your dad? My dad came through. My even, you know, my belief is this, though, Ron. Even if they would have researched my whole family, a friend of mine came through who was my best friend for a while, who was a cop who got killed in a car accident. All right, you're saying he came through. They'll go like this: Is there a P or a T you miss? And you go, Tom. And he goes, Yes, that's it, Tom. Right. Why wouldn't he just say Tom's here? Why is Why is it a P or a T? I know why. Why uh, would a dead person go up and go, uh, Hi, it's R. No, I'm going to say to the guy, and I want to talk to Fez, I'm going to say, hey, it's Ron. Mm -hmm. Ron Bennington. And I'm going to know who Ron Bennington is. Right. They did come up with my dad's name. My name, not an initial. First and last? First. What's your dad's name? Don. Oh, that's pretty good. But what do you say? Is there a Don? Did he already have the D first? He goes, is there? No, not only. No, but no, they'll go like this. Is there a Don or an Allen or a Gertrude? No. They keep running off a list of names and initials. I can you, tell you exactly what the, it was. The law of averages makes you connect with somebody. Right. Out of the clear blue sky, he goes, I'm seeing a Dan, a Daniel, or a Don. All right. There's three different names. Very similar, though. How do you figure that? All begin with D. All right, here I am, right? Hi, my name's Ron. No one's going to... Uh, there's a Rob or a Rick or a Ron in the room. You know, I don't... Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to come back from the dead and say, Oh, could you get a hold of Ronnie? My name is Fred or Fez or Frank. <laughs> well, you know, I guess it doesn't come through clear after all. Is there I, a I believe... Fed? Is there a Fed? <laughs> I go, oh, that must be Iris asking for him. All right, what exactly happened? Tell us the whole story. Uh, I think it started, I remember, it was just me and him, and he started... And getting, a camera. Yeah, a couple of cameras, actually. Uh. And uh, the details, there were a few things that he came up with that there's no way in heck that he would have, uh, he could have known. Like something I said to my wife about not having kids. I mean, we came up with a joke that I tell her from time to time. It was like, how can we have kids? You can't even keep a plant alive for six months. He came up, there's a joke between you and your wife about the plants or something. I mean, that's freaking. My friend who died, who was a police officer, yeah. uh -huh. he, goes, he goes, I see you above him, and there was something between you that was initials, and he, he died in a fiery explosion. I was his boss at HFC, and he was a police officer. He got killed in a car crash. You crying? From work. Yeah, I did. You still got the tape? Mm-hmm. I want you to bring it in. Okay. Yeah, I'm I want to see that. that. Well, uh, a very exciting uh, night tonight on the Ron Fez show. A couple nights ago, we just found out that our own Billy Staples has done the John Edwards' I Want to Talk to the Dead program. Mm -hmm. He was on an episode of Crossing Over. Now, uh, according to Billy, he was the very first guest <laughs> John Edwards ever had, launching his career, I guess, <laughs> into... Uh, oh, by the way, it's December 6th. Sorry, everybody. Uh, the uh, Launching his career, Jonathan Edwards, into all of our living rooms now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did the pilot episode. We watched a little bit of it. We watched maybe the first minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Billy enters the show crying. Before anything is even said, there's a very weepy Billy Staples taking his seat. Just slobbering and crying and, and moaning and groaning and smiling and uh, just approval. And that's long before John Edwards has even said anything, long before Billy Staples has right. been, been contacted. I think what it was is... Billy was just overwhelmed by what a handsome man John Edwards right, did. Sure. Just completely taken aback by the pure beauty of the guy. Now, I don't know uh, if, any, uh, if anybody believes in this guy. I mean, obviously a lot of people do. Personally, I don't see it at all. I think it's a carny gimmick from way back. This thing has been done since the beginning of time. People always want to believe things, and other people will say, I'll uh, help you believe it if you pay me. That's how I see it. Mr. John Edwards. Right, and anyone that's seen the Crossing Over show. Right. The, um, the fact that why the ghosts or the people on the other side, I'll put it that way, why they're just throwing out random letters. If someone's guy's name is Fred, right. why doesn't he just say, it's Fred? Why do you have to go through, is there an F? Is there a Frank? Is there a, uh, a Freddy? Oh, yes, there is. Yes. This is amazing. Uh, I knew something was happening. How could he have guessed my letter? It's like on the other side, there's nothing but Vanna Whites turning over letters. Uh, Fess, I see a white person coming uh, that's already dead, uh, an older person to you. Yes. Uh, if, uh, a, a grandparent? Uh, yes, it is a grandparent. Uh, yes, my grandmother. There's always mother figures and father figures. He throws a, It's uh, like a mother figure to you. What the hell does that mean? I only have one mom. <laughs> an older woman, you mean? She's my mother figure. Yeah. My mother is my mother figure. 
Exactly. So I don't know uh, how he does this. Billy, on the other hand, uh, honestly believes that uh, he talked to his uh, dead dad that day. He swears by it. He will not be convinced otherwise. Hey, Patrick. Patrick, you're on the uh, Ron Fez show. Hi, Patrick. How you doing there, guys? What can we do for you tonight? Where was this Jonathan Edwards when the Twin Towers was being attacked? Like, why didn't you let us know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, none of these guys uh, ever seem to do well with the stock market, Super Bowl games. Lotto. Yeah. And then they act like, well, it's nothing I can make money off of. Well, you're making money off the people. You're getting yeah, paid. that's true. If I use my powers to win the lottery, right. I'll lose them. In the meantime, come see me this Friday and Saturday. I'll be at the... Yeah, and I'm charging uh, $200 an hour. $200 an hour? I bet you couldn't even... You couldn't yeah, I think see... actually Edwards is 300 an hour. I bet you can't see his house for 300 Fez. <laughs> I guarantee you. Someone told me 300 Maybe it was 300 before he got this show. All right. But I guarantee you now. It's it's astronomical. And uh, so isn't that winning the lottery? Yeah, John Edwards. Sure. I'm sure he's becoming very, very rich off this. Hey, uh, Christy, Christy, you're on our uh, Fez. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yeah. Um, did you guys hear about him during uh, Sweeps Week? Did no. you guys hear about that story? Of uh, John Edwards? Yeah. What did he do? Um, well, he did a show. He had uh, the victims' families of the World Trade Center. Oh, I heard that he wanted to do that. And yeah, he stopping that's him. so wrong. He wanted to do that during uh, Sweeps Week, and then yeah. his producers told him... Not to do it. Well, especially when it's uh, That's, yeah. so, so recent. I mean, we're not even three months now. I think people would be uncomfortable hearing from the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> not enough time has passed. Yeah. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And I don't know who stopped in. Uh, stepped in. I guess the network did, right? Yeah, I think it was yeah the syndicators at USA or whoever does it said, no, we won't be doing this show. Gah. Well, you know, I, mean, I hope that didn't take too long of a board meeting to come up with that decision. Hey, Ed, Ed, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, what's up, boys? Oh, buddy. $600 a half hour. 600 a half hour? Yep. And he doesn't even guarantee anything. According well, to Billy, everything happens is, uh, pretty quickly. And what's and bogus. The, and what's yeah, but the he doesn't guarantee that he'll, he'll talk to anybody on the other side. Any idea what the waiting list is? Uh, I don't know. Go on I, this website, and it's all on there. Uh, well, we don't have anybody to do that for us. <laughs> uh, if, that website, cool. if that website ever pops up on the back of uh, Billy's head, we will have it on the show. Until that point, no. Um, quick clicking Billy's ear. It's not a mouth. All right? Thank you. Hey, Chris. Chris, you're on the uh, Run of Fest show. Hey, yeah, Chris. Guys. Yeah, buddy. Isn't this the same guy that got busted for miking the studio so he could eavesdrop on people before the show? No, I think that was more uh, some kind of Christian guy who would uh, pull the livers out of people. You sure? Because I could have sworn I heard it was this guy. You ever see those guys? They'll bring in some calves' livers and they start pulling cancer out of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. ones that like, smack you with the coat and then you pass out. Yeah, I like that guy. What's his name? Benny Hinn? Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn, yeah. yeah. He's Benny good. Hinn will knock you down. He's nice. So it wasn't this guy that was miking the studios, huh? Yeah. All right, thanks. All right, see you later. I don't think it was him, anyway. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been a, be a bigger deal right now. I mean, obviously, the guy's going to get brought down sooner or later. You know, it's a fad thing. Right. But right already, now, he's red hot. I think in Missouri and other places, they're already going after Miss Cleo. Here's, uh... It's a matter of time. Here's Frank. Frank, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Frank. Hey, hi, Ron and Fez. How you doing? Hey, buddy. Listen, um, I was a skeptic, too, but I was watching the show after Thanksgiving. I think it was the Friday... And the guy, he amazed me because first, thing, let's assume these people aren't plants they've never met before. He tells one audience member, he's like, "You're from Levittown, okay?" And he he even tells her what exit, where he said, "Right off the highway, right off the I think it was the LIE or whatever the North State." Then he goes to two people, which was really cool. He says, "Are you have an uncle or a father named Dominic?" And she's like, "Yes." And they were in the ice business. And the guy went on for about 20 minutes, a half an hour, talking about how there was a murder and uh, these guys were involved in the mob. And it turns out he was talking to one girl, but it was actually the girl right next to him. All right, here, here's what I, wa I want you to understand. People in Long Island named Dominic 
<laughs> normally have somebody that's been involved in both the mob and the ice business. Okay? I, I, that's not exactly the needle in the proverbial <laughs> haystack. Well, the uh, wait a minute. Did he like different. pasta? Did he want pasta with every meal? I'm. Uh, uh, know, how, wait, how hold on. Know? I'm seeing him in his boxer shorts at the house. <laughs> Did he used to whack your mom on the side of the ear? Sometimes for no apparent reason. Oh, this is all coming so fast. Did he enjoy Sinatra? But he went into some great details about an investigation and how the family was involved in the stuff. And then the people, that the lady in the audience fessed up. Like, yeah, he was involved to some degree with some, some you know, unsavory characters. But she wouldn't go on, you know, she wouldn't admit to an actual murder investigation. But uh, it was pretty weird. And, and by the way, the Levittown lady was a different lady from the one with the ice uh, problem. But uh, it was... I, so you're I, a 100% believer. I'm not 100 percent. I mean, for all we know, these people are plants, and you know, he he kind of got some stories together beforehand. Well, also, I'll tell you this: Billy even told us that the show is heavily edited, that he did 22 minutes with the guy, and seven aired. Right, where they combined different contacts that Billy was getting from the other side. Yeah. Well, it's it's still very interesting either way. All right, Frank. Thanks for the call, buddy. All right, here's where we're getting private one-on-ones with this guy. Uh -huh. In other words, cost him appointment three hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars for every additional family member. Dang. Why is that? So if you want to take your poor mother with you, yeah, that's another hundred dollars for her to sit there in the room. And who actually wants to go by yourself? Right, you, you got want to somebody. Take somebody. Private uh, at, book the first Wednesday of every month between. 7 and 9.30. So he's barely even mm -hmm. doing these things anymore. And I'm sure the waiting list is longer than for giant season tickets. Yeah, it's uh, it's got to be. Estimated waiting time at least three years. Wow. I'll be dead by that time. <laughs> In three years, I'll come and see you on the other side. Should I make an appointment now to see you? All right, Harry. Harry, you're on run of us. Hi, Harry. Hi. Uh, yeah, my friend's father died, and uh, his mom went on the show to speak to him. And it turns out that it's all like a giant hoax because they made him, they made her fill out like all these forms and stuff. They're just saying everything about her entire life before she even went on the show. So it's almost like a pre-interview. It's pretty much like, and then he goes through them and reads them and, and figures out which people he's going to talk to. He knows where they're sitting, and he already knows everything about them. All right, when we check this out, we'll have to ask Billy how many forms he filled out. Okay. Uh, Billy, I believe, claims that he didn't, but that was also the pilot, Fez. Mm. And now you're doing a show on what, CBS? They're not going to just let you wander mm. in off the street there. You know, they're checking your ID and stuff before you get tickets to a show. The first day was uh, Rube Day. Rube's getting free. Hey, Pete, Pete, but, you know, Billy doesn't even realize half the stuff that happened. I'm sure. Hey, Pete, Pete, you're on run of Fez. Hi, Rube Pete. Rube and Rube. Uh, actually, the way it probably works, it's got a three-year waiting list, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so how long does it take? And you're paying 600 bucks for a half an hour. You get a in private investigator, which I'm sure he has on, you know, standby, and they investigate somebody for three years. So even said, they, they write out a, a form. I mean, how hard can this be? The Amazing Randy's been debunking these guys for years. Yeah, I know. I've seen The Amazing Randy on different uh, shows. The funny thing, a guy like Amazing Randy will never get a following because it's not that exciting. Oh, no, it's not you know, exciting, but it's, it's the more, truth. That's it's, why. Right. It's more fun to actually believe. You know, you get a whole room full of people, and you go, you got an uncle with a letter uh, uh, A. He's on the other side, right? Uncle A, Uncle A. Yeah, uncle. Okay, yeah. Oh, All my uncles were A's. Yeah. I'm going to believe that. All right, say it, buddy. Bye, well, buddy. Uh, 877-692-1027. Uh... You know, I, I, I'm not saying that the guy is not skilled in reading people. I'm sure he's terrific. And I'm sure the kind of guy you want, If when Fez and I were watching this, everything, every time you start to lean some way, Billy is just saying yes. Right, yeah. Yes to everything. He's nodding and perking and jerking and loving the whole thing. And like we said earlier, just enthralled with the whole process. Practically giddy as it starts. Shirley, Shirley, you're on run of Fez. Hi, Shirley. Hey, guys. How you doing? Card yeah. holder three two one three. Hoo hoo hoo! Um, that John Edwards, I, I believe in him because my aunt was on the show after my grandfather passed away, uh -huh. and she thought she could talk to him, but she actually her son that was murdered about twenty years ago ended up. That's who they ended up contacting. 
It's always odd that there's other people popping in. <laughs> than the one you're there to meet. Right. And I well, mean, to me, that's a little bit of a shell game going on. Uh, was it your... Uh, oh, wait, there's another person here. Wait, is there... You got another cousin, and all of a sudden you're just... Why, you're just, uh, you know, you're swimming in your own thoughts. Well, my grandfather, he, he did end up, uh, you know, showing his two cents there. But, it, it, you know, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of fake to it, but there's also a good chance it's uh, pretty good. It's all right, but real. here's the thing. If there's even a little bit of fake... That means to me the whole thing is fake. If the guy's running any kind of a gimmick, no real person would do that, correct? I agree, but, I mean, how is he going to know that my cousin was murdered 20 years ago? I'm willing to say this. My aunt didn't fill out any I, kind of form. I, Shirley, right listen to me. Now. I'm willing to say that most people have had a member of their family over the last 20, 30, 40 years, if you're going that far, extended family murdered, die in an accident, uh -huh. be taken very young. And if you're watching, that's the kind of stuff. There was a fall of some time, there was a crash, and then you right. start filling in the blanks for him. He died violently. The guy never says, you know, he got shot at the pit quick. Ronnie, if you were asking me, any, if you were throwing out any of those things to me, yeah. I have someone in the family that fits every one of them. And everybody does. Uncle Wynn went over a cliff on a tractor. That wouldn't stop. That'll be six hundred dollars, Fizz. Damn. Wait a minute. Uh, that's seven hundred dollars. And they don't charge I see, anything to get on the show, guys. I see you got your boy Hawk behind you. They I don't have charge to have him. No, I, obviously, but they charge for commercials, right? No, I mean they charge the sponsors. I'm sure. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's where he's making his money. Oh yeah. Forget one-on-one -on -one stuff. If you've got, you know, Coca-Cola. Oh, of course. All right. Thanks, Shirley. Good night, guys. All right, bye, bye. All right, let's bring Billy in. Staples from the beyond now. Hi, Billy Staples. Hey, guys. Billy, we were just talking about you on your tape. Thanks for bringing it in, by the way. We appreciate that. Because so, we really wanted to see this. Now, you were the first televised guest for the uh, John Edwards show? Yeah, um, I did the pilot. It was not the first show that ever Ew. aired. Uh, All right. But it was, I was the very first one that they ever aired. I mean, that they ever shot. All right, start yeah. from the beginning. All right, so you were the first one, but you weren't good enough to be the pilot. You weren't good enough to actually be the first one on the air. Oh, no, it was good enough. I just think they had some bugs to work out with their production because uh, it, it was about a two-month wait before I shot it before the show actually aired. There was about a two-month gap, so they had shot a lot of shows in the meanwhile. Uh -huh. Now, you, uh, like we said when we saw this thing, you kind of entered the room crying. You were all teared up. Well, I was very excited. I was very emotional because, I, I be you know, part of me didn't believe, a part of me did believe, and it was more or less looking forward to what could happen. All right, let's, let's uh, set this up for everyone listening. Now, you're shooting the, the premiere episode of this show, the pilot episode. Correct. All right, is it everyone that showed up for the pilot? Did you go there on an acting job? No, not at all. Matter of fact, uh, how did you get in, how did you get to be part of the first audience? The, uh, well, first of all, I wasn't part of the audience. I was a one-on-one. -on -one. I was not just a member in the gallery and whatever. I uh, somebody there was an email and notice put out for people interested in being a guest on his new show. And I saw the email and I responded to it and I said what I wanted to do and they were very interested in it and they booked me as the first guest. What'd you say in this email? Just that I wanted to contact my father, who's been dead for thirty some odd years. Did you tell him you're gullible? But I'm not. I know. Why would I tell him I'm, I'm gullible if I'm not? All right, so uh, I know. You're, you're a hard sell, you are, Billy. Right, I believe. I mean, it's, it's a belief. I believe. I was there. I mean, you can say what you want about it, but I was the one who sat there. I was the one who was there. I was the one who experienced it. And... All right, you said seven minutes came on the air, right? Yeah. And how long did he actually tape with you? It was about 20 minutes, I believe. It just went very fast because right. he, he you said very, very quick. You said very little. At least on uh, TV. Right. They, he, they actually asked me before, he goes, uh, just let John do all the talking. If he asks you something, just try to get yes or no. Uh, let him know if he's on the right track. That was pretty much about it. Uh -huh. Because he, uh -huh. like, I said, like I said, he speaks very quickly. He doesn't even look at you. He looks off to the side, which is very creepy. Like he's seen something that's not even there. You know, I do that, too, and people call me rude for it. I never make eye contact. You're looking for your exit. And people are going <laughs> over here. No one says, geez, he's deep. <laughs> they say, look uh, at me. Look at that Ron Bennington <laughs> in another thought-provoking trance. I'm looking out the window going, I wish I was anywhere but here. Wondering if it opens and we can jump. 
No, he was definitely seeing something that none of us could see. Right. He's seeing where? Into the beyond. Yeah. Was he using his third eye or just the two uh, like you have? Just the two like I, but he sees things with those eyes in his mind, that normal, you know, everything. How does he do it? Does he explain his deal? Uh, well, he has explained it on his show a number of times. Because he's always had the gift, right? Yeah, he had it since, a little, since he was very young. All right, now uh, people are writing to me, how come if this guy uh, has this gift, how come he used to be a ballroom dance instructor? Really? Well, we all did stuff before we got in our chosen profession. He I was, mean, I used to work in a proctology lab, for God's sake. You but know? he was taught by people on the Titanic. Uh, how to ballroom dance. He was trying to contact Fred Astaire. The hard way. Here's, uh, here's Dennis. Dennis, you're on our run of Fez. Hi, Dennis. Hello, gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. This whole situation makes me very angry. It's no secret. Time Magazine and Entertainment Weekly both had articles that say that this guy plants people in the audience with microphones to listen to other people, the audience, talk, you know, before the show. Yeah, who are you going to ask about? I'm going to ask about this guy. I'm going to ask about that guy. This guy is, is, is people are looking for spiritual truth. And this guy's giving them crap, and people just, you know, are buying into because they're desperate and they're emotional, and it's, it's not right. All right, Dennis, then let's ask Billy about this. How many people did you have contact with while you're waiting to get read by John Edwards? One, a cute little redhead, the assistant producer. We were walking, we were ushered to the green room. You weren't left in, an, in a room full no. of other people being read where you were discussing, oh, I hope he does this for me. No, I was not in the studio audience at all. I had no contact with any other people. I How about talking. backstage? You ever said to your uh, wife, I hope it's my dad. You know, guys, it just it's amazes me that people, between the options that he's a con and there's some very fancy trickery going on, or the other option that he's actually talking to dead people, that people constantly think that the dead people option is the more likely one. But how can you explain my situation? And I wasn't in an audience talking about it. Billy, was the cute little redhead the ghost of Lucille Ball? No. Oh. Billy, people... let me ask you this. Did they, uh, did they edit anything at all doing this that appeared differently if you watched it than if you watched it live? Yes. What parts? There was one part where uh, my uncle came through who was a fireman and they said actually had a little bit of a drinking problem like the party and stuff and that what didn't pertain to him. That pertained to my stepfather who uh, who, also who also came, came through. through. Yeah, who so when passed. you were talking about your uncle on the show mm -hmm. John Edwards was actually you're agreeing to something, but you were agreeing to your to your uncle, and it was really your stepfather. No, 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 no. Because my uncle came through as a fireman in a cloud of smoke. That was all totally legitimate. I have silver. And uh, and then later he kind of just as an afterthought said, um, you know, he liked to party a bit, and he you know he really wasn't here for you. He just wanted. Yeah, he, you're not the reason he came here. He hoped you were holding. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, but if you're watching that show, you would have thought it was the other person. Yeah, but if that doesn't change. I mean, that was t so insignificant. No, I'm not, to the I'm not even saying that. Yeah. I, what I want to know is, does it appear differently live than if I watch it edited? That part, no. That part would have made no absolute difference whatsoever because it was an, almost but an afterthought. At any point when you're watching this, do you give a response, or does John Edwards talk about a response from one dead person and make it seem like it came from another? According to the editing. No, no. Everything was kind of like an afterthought. Things you would, they would add after the fact. Uh, it's, it's hard to, like, and the, uh, the other thing was he was a teacher or an educator. Again, that was my stepfather. I do not, re I, they did, they said it was about somebody else. Uh, I, I think it may have been my dad. Man, you go to the dad. All right, hold on. Sure. So, he said it about your dad, but it wasn't, it was about your stepdad. Correct. All right, here's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. He's throwing out a bunch of facts, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's doing it very quickly. And you're trying to put the puzzle together. You're probably thinking, oh, yes, he's, now it's my stepdad. Now it's my uncle. Now it's my, my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like you're working with him on this, whether you want to or not, because you want to believe. Yeah, but I wasn't saying, yes, that's my stepdad at the time. And the fact But that, you're nodding along, right? Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, what he said about my stepdad was true. But he wasn't talking about your stepdad, right? Well, during the actual time he was. I mean, during the actual reading, he was. My stepfather did come through, and he was the one who... Uh, but it doesn't but appear that way on the TV not show. On the, not on the TV show. So but it looks he... like it all is one person. Like he's read one person that came through with all these facts, and you're not along. But it was really, if we were watching live, four different type things that they piece together into one. Well, actually, no, no. Actually, on the tape, three people do come through on the tape. Uh, my father, my friend, and my uncle. And uh -huh. that, that remains very clear. But there was one extra person? My stepfather. 
and they just fit his yes facts yes. into other people. Correct. I got a little problem okay. with that before okay. we even watch. Yeah, but again, it's not going to change the validity or the no, of course the, the accuracy. The validity. Of the... No, it's so no. valid, it's unbelievable. <laughs> the accuracy right, hold on. is his... still there. Beth uh, believes also. She's like you, Billy. Okay. A lot of people believe us. Hey, Beth, Beth, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Beth. Hi, guys. Card holder 3342. <laughs> what, doing? what can we do for you tonight, sweetie? Well, I went to see him when he was on Maury. And... You were on Maury, too, Billy? Me, no. Well, he was on Maury, and my mother and my sister got red. And my grandmother died from lung cancer, and my sister's been trying to get pregnant. So she told her to quit smoking before she died. And she, so my sister would pretend to smoke. Like, she'd get a straw just because she could sit in the, the cigarette clutch. But she looked like an idiot. But he pointed that out. He's like, who's the one who pretends to smoke? And when nobody talked about that beforehand. Huh. Pretty creepy. Sounds like this interview should happen at Bellevue. <laughs> you know, uh, the fact that he was on Mari proves to me that it's fake. <laughs> oh, come on now. Why can't you guys just think that there is the possibility mm -hmm. that this is legit, that there is something we don't understand, that this guy does have a gift? I mean, it's, it is extremely possible that things are beyond the realm of our... Our what? I don't know. I'm searching for a word there. <laughs> <laughs> understanding? <laughs> understanding. Comprehension? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just mean, Billy. No. Because we just have different feelings. It's, not it's just mean. that we've seen people do this bit before. You haven't seen him do it. I watched the show. Yeah. I think it's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. I think if somebody's coming in, why wouldn't you just say, uh, Fez, is there someone in your mm -hmm. family uh, named Frank? Not someone going, is there a Fran or a Frank or a, or a Felipe or a Philip? Or, and then finally, Fez finally yells out, Ricky? Yeah. Yes! Yeah. No, see, the way it works, and he explains this on the show, is he does. it's not like having a conversation with the dead. It mm -hmm. doesn't come through like we're talking right here. He gets images from the beyond, and his, he, did, he has to interpret the images as best he can based on his life experiences. Like you'll see in the tape, there's a couple of really wacky things that come through that took me a while to figure out. It's just not like picking up a phone and calling somebody. It's an interpretation involved, too. So when you sat down, um, you know, with the the whole twenty two minute thing, the mm -hmm. long version, yeah. did it take him a while to get warmed up, or did he just start throwing stuff out at you immediately? Instantaneous. All right, why don't we take a break? When we come back, we'll play uh, Billy Staples on the John Edwards mm -hmm. show. All right, eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. I see dead people. Who said that? All right, Billy is a little... Uh, are you disappointed in this, Billy, that we didn't fall for the gimmick? Are yes. you a little disappointed? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that you guys don't uh, have a little more faith in me that I'm not a complete idiot. And it's not a gimmick. No, I mean... It's not no, a gimmick. There's a difference between a rube and an idiot. Yeah, so. you're a rube. No, I I'll tell you the truth, Billy. I think in all your heart, you wanted to believe... You miss your dad. You wanted a goodbye. You didn't get it, right? Your dad died when you were very young. You mm -hmm. were old. Uh, 11. 11. Your dad was how old? 43. All right, so that's tragic. Under any circumstances, mm -hmm. a little 11-year-old boy uh, losing his dad, a 43-year-old man taken from his family at really the prime of his life, tragic. You want some kind of answers. I understand that. All right, but that still doesn't explain, you know, rube, gullible, call it what you want. The, the things that came through without any prior knowledge are unexplainable, Ron. I think you'll feel differently after you listen uh, to the tape. I honestly do. I think you guys should open your eyes to see this a little bit more. At what point of the tip? At what point did your dad hop into Whoopi Goldberg's body and start to talk to you? When was were you, that? Were you already done with the pottery at that point? Had you finished making that pot and getting clay all over each other? I, I don't recall hearing the Righteous Brothers either. I don't remember any of that coming through. Or when he moved a penny across the room. No, I. Does, don't recall that either. What about later when he went after the guy who was trying to kill you and started effing with his computers? Uh, no, no, that wasn't there either. At any point did anybody say to you, get off my train? <laughs> no, he didn't make it either. He didn't show up. Okay. So I know that you, uh, you want to believe this, and I, you know, I'm up for If it makes you feel better, it's a good thing. Well, right. I do feel better but about I, it. I just think the guy is, uh, you know, a carny. It's far I think from... it's the beginning of The Wizard of Oz. I think he reached mm. into your bag and he saw that picture of you and Annie M. And he brought it up to you. I think it's great he sent you home. Right. 
and told you that you could find your bicycle in the Alamo, the basement. <laughs> wow. No, I don't recall that either, Fez, honestly. Uh, I think I would have remembered the Pee Wee reference. <laughs> now, did uh, you, when you started the reading with him, did you immediately say, yes, this guy has nailed it. This guy is talking to my dad. It did not take, a, it, it was very quick. I mean, it was, boom, I was sold. All right. you know, as soon as I heard, did you go in skeptical at all or more hopeful? Oh, today's the day I finally get some answers. Hopeful? Yes, I mean, I was very hopeful, but yeah, there was a part of me, my logic was saying, was extremely skeptical. You know, like I wanted to believe it was possible, but I went in there saying, you know what, this may not happen for me. But as soon as we sat down and a couple of things came through, I was 100% there. Billy, uh, I got a serious question. Now, did you meet him in a carnival? And he put you in the body of a 30-year-old man, and then you went into a mall and played chopsticks on a large piano? Hmm. That's big. He's doing the thing big. No, I don't recall that either, Jeff. Too bad. That was a good movie. All right, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Ron. How are you doing? Yeah. Hey, listen, I think we're missing a key point here. He said he didn't fill out any paperwork, but, you know, initially he said he sent an email to them saying basically he wanted to contact his dead father of 37 years. I mean, if that's not a tip-off, I'm not sure, you right. know, uh, get him going on the right path. There. Well, that's, that's not a secret. you got to go there wanting to contact right. some dead Right. So person. how hard would it be for him to figure out... Well, you know, all right. Uh, he only knew my first name going in, so right. all these guys who say they nobody had a, n they never knew your last name. No one did. All right, but no one knew staples. nobody part of his staff. All right, no. even if they researched my whole genealogy, my family tree, that would not explain my friend who came through, who would, no one would ever know about, who died like 16 Here's years before this happened. You, Billy, I think that you explain these facts as your friend. I think right. he throws things out there, and you want to believe so much that you start going, "Oh, that's my friend." Oh, the other one's my uncle. Oh, Ron, you're going to be very surprised when you see the specifics he comes through with on my friend. Very, very, you're going to be very surprised. Yeah, I think once you get him on the path of generic... Get ready, Ronnie. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be freaking out. Thanks, Jeff. Here's uh, KJ. KJ, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. How you doing? KJ. KJ. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yeah. I got to I gotta say I agree with Billy on this one. Yeah. I don't know, man. Hello. That's it? Well, uh, your I've name. I'm seeing a, a K years. and I'm seeing a J. What's that? Hello? Yes, explain to us why we should believe. All right. I watched the show for a few years and I'm a skeptic. Uh huh. All right. But some of the stuff this guy knows is sick. I understand. You got, you're sitting there like, what? <laughs> I understand. But what if he knew the facts before? What if the tapes have all been edited? Why isn't it a, a, a kind of taped live show? The way they do the Tonight Show or Letterman, why are they taping for three hours for a half hour show? But it was not generic information that he came up with. It wasn't like I think that if you no, guys I, see this, you'll, you know, you'll. I've seen the show before. Oh, you have? And I, I know people who do the same act, probably not as well as he does. No. Uh, and, it's, and we know one guy who we know for sure is a fake, mm -hmm. and he's doing the exact same routine. No, he doesn't have the gift. With the, I see, I see a Jim, a John, a Joey. A... No. Right, and then people go, yes, Joey, that's it. Right. And that's probably the extent of it. He keeps fishing and fishing and fishing. John was very specific with the things that he, right, he never said. Me. He never said initial first. He never said more than one name. Oh, of course he did. What do you mean, of course? Like, all that's obvious. This, all that sound exactly the same. He goes, I'm seeing a Bob, a Kim, or a Larry. No, no, no. It no, wait, hold on. So if, if Fez runs into somebody and they go to him, uh, yeah, you are Fez, Frank, but he's going to think, this son of a bitch doesn't even know my yeah. name. Right. Not somebody that knows him would never do that or remember him. Again, it goes It'd back. be a guy fishing. Again, it goes back to what I said before. The images he gets can be interpreted in a number of different ways, and he does the best with what he's seeing in his head, the messages, to right. interpret them to us. Eric, you're a manifest. Yeah, hey, Eric. How you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, I think uh, old things, you know, crap, and uh, yeah, I think you guys are overlooking some. The old episodes are on the sci-fi channel. Yeah. Now, what's the other half of sci-fi? Fiction. Fiction. Yeah. It means to me that the whole thing's fake. And plus, where did he get this gift from? Now, where did he get know? the gift? He was yeah. born with it. It's not like you can buy this story. Well, he's he born probably with dropped it. on his head, and now he's stupid. Nah. All right, he's, well, the guy's you know, not stupid, no matter what. Hopefully you don't ever lose somebody that you'd like to contact, you know? I mean, and you'd be Billy, running to him in a second. I understand. <laughs> that part is sad. That part is sad. And a lot of us wish we could talk to somebody else. You can. 
I'm not going to wait three years. All right, uh, I'm going to put Mackenzie on, who uh, has some quotes for us. Mackenzie, you're on a fez. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi. Um, I'm just calling to defend John and Billy. Um, I don't think that John is BS at all. He's the first person that will come out and tell you that he doesn't like to um, have people go through him in order to contact um, their loved ones. He feels that it should have been done while they were still alive. And he also doesn't need to justify himself, whereas other psychics always have to come up with excuses. He's not BS. Like, the stuff that he comes out with... I'm glad unreal. he doesn't feel the need to justify himself. By doing he, a syndicated TV show. Right. No, it's not. He, do, he does it because he shows people that, like, there is an afterlife. Well, I mean, for those that actually... But let me explain. If anything happens in a scientific paper, okay, somebody writes a scientific theory, the first thing all the other scientists make him do is justify this. The first thing they do is attack it like they were opposing lawyers to try to figure out why this theory is not true. That's how we get to the end of this. But with this stuff, hey, I don't have to prove it. It just he, is. Well, no, right, we no, have he, we have the tape. We'll we'll, we'll all watch it. Okay. Watch because the tape because he'll pull out he'll pull out details that you just sit there yes. and you're like, where did this come from? How would he know that? There's things that people people right, we're gonna watch it. And watch it because all right, we're gonna watch change it. Change your mind. Okay. Yeah, right. uh, my mind will be changed. I hope it is, Fuzzy. That would be nice. Be nice to uh, think that this guy's all uh, legit. And on the level, I think and that you can uh, go to him and get help. Fezzi, I'm going to say this. He's too legit, too legit to quit. Nice. Hopefully that'll be our attitude after we watch this videotape. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. 877-692-1027. We're Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez .com. Billy was pleased that his dad came through, but a little surprised when an old friend came through also. Here's what he had to say to our producers after the show. My experience today was amazing. Um, more came through than I ever imagined. The older man with the flag at my father's funeral, um, they, it was a military funeral, and at the flag off my father's casket, they came over and they handed it to me. And I have never opened it or done anything with it since, and I still have it folded up in my closet. But the young man in the car accident with the shield was my best friend, Glenn. He died in a terrible car crash going to work one night. Um, it was alcohol related. It was a big explosion. He was a police officer, and uh, he was my best friend for a long, long time. The hit with Disneyland was he sold my mouse. That's where my wife and I we went on our honeymoon. Linda and I don't have any children, so I tease her about you know the plants dying. I was like, how can you want to have kids? You can't even keep a plant alive. <laughs> I don't understand about Wayne Newton. Uh, I'm gonna try and find out, but I have no idea. As with all sessions, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or in the gallery, not everything I say makes sense all the time. Sometimes I misinterpret, and I know that that Wayne Newton reference has something to do with his family, and I just don't know when it's going to come out, but hopefully Billy will call us when he figures it out. All right. Billy Staples on the John Edwards Show crossing over. What a fast-talking bastard. I was trying to take uh, notes there, Fuzzy. I could barely keep up. It was very hard because he's, like I said, he's gazing off into another place, talking a mile a minute. And here's the, okay, another place because he's so far above us. He's from another dimension. Billy, you went there to talk to your dad, right? Correct. What possible information did you get from your dad before Smokey and your and your well, friend and everybody else came hopping? And Wayne in? Newton. To you begin got with, nothing. To begin with, he said my dad's name. Right? He no, said, no, no, no. You went there to talk with your dad, right? Right, but by him saying that, my dad's name acknowledged that my father was there. Okay, and, and, hold on. Okay. You never got to, he never gave you anything from your dad. Yeah, about the flag. The flag, and that was it. That's plenty. That is all your father's worried about on the other side? No, he told Where's me. Where's the flag? He told me it was okay about the flag. Telling me it was all right that I never put it out, I never used it for anything, that I still have it folded in the triangle from the day I got it at the funeral. That's See, what everybody does. You, no, I, the flag we had in the office was from my grandmother. That's been opened up and stuff. I just felt it, would, it was that wrong to open it wrong. up and, and use it for anything. Uh, it's, it's always been folded right, but So up. that was the big information from your dad before all these other people can pop it in. Ron, if I He's got nothing else to say, say to you after 30 years. 
you know, again, it's like just the fact that that came through is enough. Just the fact that my dad was there and said, uh, sent a message to me about the flag. What's he going to say? You know, hey, I'm glad you, you know, glad you're doing comedy. Said, no. It yes, was that would have been great. I would have enjoyed that. It doesn't information. work. It's not a conversation like picking up and dialing. This is something that was very important. This was handed to me as an 11-year-old boy, a flag at All right, but that's funeral. It. After 30, let me tell you, let's suppose your dad actually went out to sea and they can come back for 37 years. And the first thing he brings up is the damn flag. You're going to be saying, you know something, I got kids, I'm married, I got all this other stuff. You're still bringing up the damn flag to me after all this time. No, anything. I mean, that that was probably one of the the most sentimental things, you know, going back to the funeral, and you I get, guess. You went there to talk to your dad, mm -hmm. right? And he knows it. Then f right off the bat, he's like, there's an older male. Right, he yelled out, grandfather, uncle. Father, there's a father figure. And you've already emailed that you wanted to contact your father. Correct, but I so emailed the producers. The, he knows... Right, the, he doesn't talk to his producers. No. Well, we don't. No. They have us there. But seriously, I mean, if Jeremy has information, he doesn't give it to us. Because we're in two different worlds. Again, there was no fact sheet filled out. All I mentioned was I wanted to contact my father, didn't give a name. Didn't and then right up, but, but his first thing with you was, I see a father figure. Mm -hmm. A father, an uncle, a grandfather. And at that point, you started crying. Well, pretty close. Yeah, I was definitely... Uh, believe it. And you were believing at that point. Of course I was believing at that point. How would he know about the flag? Even if they researched my family and found out my dad's name and how he died and everything else, how would they know that uh, the flag is still in my closet and I never opened it up? All right, Ronnie. I don't remember him saying that the, you never opened up the flag. You're saying that. No, he told me that uh, the message was, it's okay about the flag. That's it? Yeah, that's plenty. What, of all the things for him to come up with about a dead father, you think, how would he know that there was even, there was a flag involved in a military funeral? Ronnie, ask me about my father and say, is there a flag? Uh, all right, uh, your dad, there's something about a flag, Fez? Yes, every Sunday he puts out a buccaneer flag out in front of the house. And uh, he lost one one time, putting it on the side of the car driving to the stadium. Uh, ask me about the flag, Fez. Uh, Ron, yeah. um, I believe I'm getting a father figure, says something about a flag. Oh, my God, he gave me an early American flag that was a Bennington flag. And I uh, had it at one time, and I put it in storage, and I don't know where it is now. Everyone Everybody has a flag gets story. a flag. That's ridiculous. This is the flag for well, my father's funeral. Right, but this mine will be just as important. Oh, well, mine a, isn't a family flag. A Buccaneer flag? That's to their family. They go to the Buccaneer games every Sunday. You what know, we're trying to say is you can you make my father. If you knew my father, <laughs> he bleeds pewter. Okay. Oh. But that was probably one of the best things just to mention. You and know, you think, how many, how many Americans you think are buried with a flag? How many guys is, were in the service? All the veterans. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say. Who's so to say that my dad, how, do we, how would he even know my dad was a veteran? There's a good shot there. That's if, all I'm saying. If your dad died 30 years ago, there's a good chance that he had some sort of military service. And there's also a good chance that he wasn't in the military. You know, right, uh, and the guy's talking so quick he'd have moved on. Other things came up, like Wayne Newton. That meant nothing to you. At but the that's time. Not st at the time, does it now? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, it happens... I'm not so even going to ask. Again, it happens so quickly, guys. You Actually, after it's over, your mind is spinning so much with information. Okay. It takes yeah, I know. Mine is just from hearing the thing. You know, you misinformation. Talk... My mind is spinning with misinformation. Good. My father came through to me and talked about a flag, and it's like it, it, minimizing that is it's, it's actually hurtful. Well, in your dream the other night, did he bring up the flag again? No, he talked to me about being dead. Right. <laughs> he started making sense to you in your dream, right? But again, Not constantly harping on that damn flag. <laughs> again, my father's completely. <laughs> My father's come through to me twice in dreams, um, and only since this reading. Never before that. And with Na uh, with um, Wayne Newton? No, Wayne Newton was not there. Wayne, Wayne Newton's still alive. All right, oh, hold cool. on. Here's uh, Bill. Bill, you're on our run of Fez. Hi, Bill. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, buddy. Yeah, I, I want to ask Billy Staples a question. Yeah. Billy, when you're at, like, at the carnival, right? Mm-hmm. And a guy says, uh, I'll guess you wait for two bucks. And if I'm wrong, I'll give you this nice fine mug here. Now, and you sit on the scale, and he guesses your weight, he's wrong, and you, you win the mug, and you walk away saying, geez, I feel real good, I won the mug, the guy was wrong. I beat, I won. Yeah, but actually, all the guy's doing is selling mugs. Right. He's not overpriced mugs. 
I did the same thing in the carnival. Spin and win whatever it stops on is what you get bear dog every time. Everybody <laughs> left with a bear dog. And they all, good. Everybody thought they were a winner. Woo. And we used to get those dogs for like $7 a gross. You'd be lucky if, by the time you got to the... Uh, and to the midway that it just didn't come apart in your hand. <laughs> the difference is that guy is a hack and a phony. That's the whole thing. And everyone knows that going in. If he does guess your weight, it's just a lucky guess. Can I tell you something? Very few people know that it's a hack and a phony. I don't buy that. You're going to say some guy sitting there with two teeth is going to have the ability to guess your weight and when you were born. What we're saying well, is the way to be no, easier. but you still win. He wins. He got your money. So he won right from the start. It's not the same. Uh, here's Michael. Michael, you're on our Fest. Hi, Michael. Yeah, hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Hey, um, uh, for the military funerals, one, you can research any military funeral, go back and find out who had a military funeral. Second thing, all military funerals, they give a flag out. They probably asked his mom, you know, who wants the flag, and she said, give it to my son. Yeah, they always so that's give That's how they can know that, he, uh, that the flag was involved. You, you, that, yeah, but you don't have to have a military funeral to get a flag. No, but I mean, you can research. If you, you can research a military funeral, though, that's probably how they knew about it. As long as you were a vet, you can receive a flag. Exactly. All right, thanks, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Let's take a break. We'll come back and listen to it again, and we'll, and we'll stop it from time to time. Sure enough. Also, yeah. your wife wants to be on the show. and uh, Well, she was there with me, so if there's anything right. uh, I was forgetting or she can alight, she might remember something. We'll, we'll talk know. to your wife and then later your son, Bart, and we'll get to the whole family. Oh, wait, that's a different show. <laughs> that's that's that a is. different show. <laughs> it is. It's on earlier. Right. 877 We're Ron and Fez. We're Ron and Fez. In the living years, we're running fast. All right, we're going over this thing with uh, our own Billy Staples has done this John Edwards show. Went there hoping to contact his father who passed away 30 years ago. Billy says his father came through along with some other dearly departed from Billy's life. We listened to the entire interview. Now what we'd like to do is just go back and check a few things. Billy, you don't mind. I mean, you're... You're very gung-ho about this. You absolutely believe you were contacted through John Edwards. Oh, yeah, and I welcome the opportunity to explain it. I, I, All right, I'm and so you don't mind it. if Ronnie and I are a little skeptical here and try to point out some things along the way. Go, go right ahead. All right, why don't we uh, play the tape now Okay. and try to stop it from time to time because this guy talks so fast, Fuzzy, yeah. and about nothing that... After a while, it's just words slapping around. Right. That's that's one of the points right from the get. He's throwing out so much information that isn't it very likely something's going to connect if you're throwing out that right. many pieces of info? Especially if you want to believe. Right. Yeah, but you would normally throw out generic stuff. What he came out with was extremely specific. All right. Let's, uh, let's start and go through it. All right. We'll start here, right here at the beginning. My name is Billy Hine. My father passed away when I was 11. Uh, he died suddenly. All right, right away, Billy. He, you acting like you can't believe he, he found your dad. You're letting everybody know that you're looking to talk to your dad. All right, let's keep okay. going. I suddenly have a heart attack when we were on a family camping trip. I never got to say goodbye, and I just hope that today I'll finally be able to put this behind me and get on with the rest of my life. Recently, I sat down to do a one-on-one -on -one session with a man named Billy. He was hoping to connect with a father he lost when he was just a boy. Here's what happened. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is I'm getting a feeling of an older male figure who has crossed over, and that to me would be something that I would see. All right. All right, now don't you think that I would be able to do that if I knew you were looking to talk to your father? Yeah, you could say I'm, I'm seeing a male father figure. Of course Old, you could. Yeah. All right, an older so the, male figure. Again, that is the only information he had going in. All right? Uh, but, if you want to sit there and say, yeah, you know, this could be a setup. And just like, just yeah. so you know, you gasped when he said that. <laughs> you literally gasped, and the tears are all welled up. And, <clears> but, oh. but here's well, the I, thing. Why does he have to do that if he knows you're there? You volunteered the information. You'd like to speak to your dad. Mm -hmm. Find it, get some closure. 
Why does he have to start it out with older male figure? Because that's why can't he say, "I'm seeing your father"? Because this is what he's getting. What happens is, if it appears above me, it's an older figure, a father or grandfather. If it appears above my head, and if it appears to the side, it's people my same age. And if it appears below me, it's a child or someone younger. Than below me oh. is right. Oh. Below me is what I would have said to him. So it's not a specific... Below me. Look there. Below me? Below all of us. <laughs> so you're, you're getting the impression again, and I can't... And then when you're done, below yourself, pal, because I ain't buying. I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> So you think everything's coming through specifically crystal clear. It's not. It's images. And the images that he was seeing were above me, so it's an older figure. All right. Okay, so he great. actually saw... All right, now, all right. Let me ask this, then. If he's seeing an image of your father, right? But he sees an image, not of my father, something that he can relate to. Maybe he'll see his grandfather or his father. That's the image that he sees in his head. Okay, because he, my point is, if he's seeing an older male figure... Your father's not an older male figure to you anymore. You're the same age. Yeah, but in relationship to me, it is. All right. It would be an older male. Okay. Here we go. More John Edwards and Billy Staples. Feeling of an older male figure who has crossed over, and that to me would be something that I would see as either being father, grandfather, uncle. It's somebody who I would see as being crossed over already. We're not talking about somebody who's here. Tell me about Danny or Denny. Den Danny? DN. Danny, Don, Denny. There's like a DN connection that's coming up with this. All right, another gasp. Four names into this thing, you gasp. First off, my father's name was Don, Donald Hine, right? Okay, so... Of what do people call him? Don. All right. They never called him Danny or Denny? No. Okay. <laughs> or Den. At one point, the man just yelled out, Den. I see him in the den. Put it this way, every word, every name he came was... out with sounded very similar, the D-N sound. So, I mean, come on, he didn't throw in a Jimmy or a Louie in there. All right, Ronnie, is there a Denny, a Danny, or a Don in your life? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. But is it your father who you were looking to contact? No, but it's a father figure. Ugh. I have an Uncle There's Don. A... Okay, so only, nothing would have meant anything to you unless it was your dad, right? No, uh, with what you'll hear later, a lot of it would have meant something to me. But exactly, but look, he just said, is there a, do you have a, a Danny or a Don in your life? Yes, I do. All right, let's keep moving. All right. Danny, Don, Denny. There's like a DN connection that's coming up with this. And he's showing me books in schooling and education. And All right, I'm let's asking, stop there. Stop what's, right the, there. what's the books in schooling and education? Uh, yeah, because I missed that completely the first time. That was time. my stepfather. That's I, where they edited it. They added that in for some, un which makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't add anything to the reading. But that was regarding my stepfather, who was a teacher. Okay. All right, so that's a... So that's, that, now, that's a some, problem for me. For yeah, some it, reason, that's a man who... Claims to be on the level, right. and yet is using creative editing to make it look like he's getting more information about your dad than he actually has. Okay, again, in production... Now, wait a minute, I see books, uh, desk. First, did your dad go to school at one point? Yes, he did. That'll be $600, please. And another 100 for the Hawk. That's 700 Now, we are running a Hawk, special... Hawk, you're going to have to go home! Now, we are running a special every Christmas time. <laughs> All right, so right away you said there's creative editing. Yes, but my stepfather did no, come no, through. No, 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 no. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I got a problem that they would fake anything. It wasn't fake. It wasn't fake. It did happen. It did occur. They it's just for some anytime reason... you uh, do something weird with the editing, that's fake. Um, again, I leave that to the production. It's, with, it's with like the sci Mark either. Burnett from Survivor. Mm -hmm. The last time in Australia. He went and reshot things using extras posing as the castaways. You know, and people are going, all right, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. You know, and he goes, oh, it was just for production value. Because, Billy, it's just a show. That's the <laughs> point. It's about because it's a show. All right, so let's see. Where he's already faking us 14 seconds into this thing. Right. All right, let's, let's go on now. Schooling and education. And um, they're asking me, how come you didn't put the flag out? All right, hold on. Why are they asking? Because there's more than one person there. Who is it? All the people. They all. It's not like you know one person who comes in. So the all the, the dead relatives and friends who were. All right. So your them. dad is hanging around with your stepdad in heaven. Ew. No, these are the messages that are getting coming from the beyond to John. It's not like it's like one person comes in and you got dead person waiting when the next guy comes in right after him. That's all coming at once. He's getting bombarded with images. All right. So the big point. That you haven't seen your dad in, what, 37 years or something? 30, well, 1969, 32 years. All right, 32 years. All he cares about is this damn flag. That's a very important part That's of That's a keepsake. It's a keepsake. I agree. There was no reason for you to hang that flag up. I would have thought it was weird if you did. 
What would you? What would you? What would he have had to have said? Or my dad would have had to have said to convince you guys? Just the fact that this is something that came from his funeral when I was, you know, when I was very young and it meant a lot to me. Right. It still means a lot to me. One of the last things I have from my father. What, yeah, if, what, what if he said something about the day he died? That's where you feel any sort of guilt. The fact that you weren't there. You were never they, guilty about the flag. No. But I did. He did come to me in the dream and explain to me a little. But no, this stuff. happened years later. We're talking about you yeah. and John Edwards. Yeah. You know. Why didn't he say something about what you really needed? If he's there and he's there to speak to you, I mean, don't you think something about? That Are you talking camping? about Don or Denny? Don. Don the dad. But Fez, that didn't he was take you I to needed. Denny's? Maybe that's what that was all about. No, we never. You went guys to used to go to Denny's a lot. <laughs> Back then, it was called Sambo's. <laughs> You know, but that was what I needed, though, Fez. All that right, hit a chord with all me. Right, okay. I mean, okay. All right, all right but we explained the whole flag thing last break. And um, they're asking me, how come you didn't put the flag out? <laughs> is it like a family thing that you normally do? <laughs> no, it's, it's I, something else. What, what is something else? <laughs> and the tears, as you can hear, audience, are just flowing at this point. Let me ask you this. Sure. If he would have asked you for oral at that second when you gave it to him. <laughs> of course not. All right. You're not I disagree. below him. That's the only thing so far that I do believe, <laughs> that you would have gave him oral. <laughs> Nothing else makes sense to me. All right. All right. We continue. Mm. Billy Staples being interviewed by John Edwards. No, it's it's something else. Okay. They just want me to ask you that. I don't know why. I have no idea. I'm just thinking because my world just passed. But they're saying, like, why didn't you put the flag out? Um, again, it's their validation, their way of coming through for you. Okay, now, Kenny, Kevin, Candy, there's some type of K-N. All or... right, let's stop there. Okay. You're dead. You want to talk to your dad. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, somebody else comes in. You get one thing, the flag, and that's it. But I get other messages later on that are not so clear who they're coming from. But this one... All right, but here I would say this. Everyone but my dad, please shut up. It's not like you can call the shots. You know, it's like, it's, <laughs> obviously. I mean, it's like all of a sudden you got people coming through. I've never contacted my dead friends and relatives before. Can I tell you what he did there, though? What's that? Listen to the names that he did. Is there a Kenny, Candy, Kevin, Kirsten, or Kristen? Or KNs. Yes, but he did man, woman, man, woman. I right. mean, you could get any sort of K name, male or female, out now, of that. And let me ask you this Who doesn't know a Kevin or a Kenny? I do, I do. Me too. I know Kevin or Kenny yeah. also, but this was uh, my friend's last name. What Which is what? your... Can you say that? Sure, Kineski. <laughs> Wait that, a do minute. You, do you realize that that's nowhere near candy? It said the KN sound. Oh, God, Billy. Wait, Billy. wait, wait. When you hear the rest, it'll all make a perfect picture. It'll wait all wrap up and you'll... He says you. Do you know a Kenny? You start crying, sobbing. Yes, I do. That Kineski. Yeah, don't you understand? This was a shock for me. I didn't expect that this for Glenn, my my buddy Glenn Kineski, to come through. I didn't. Uh, he didn't. Kevin and Kirsten did. Do you do you know a candy? Yes, <laughs> Alan Kowicki. He passed away. It's Alan Kowicki, the NASCAR driver. He didn't even guess the name, and you're agreeing. Huh, I don't. Th again, you guys are making it seem like it comes through clear as a but, bell. But it's an you interpretation. You told him, yes, that's his last name. I said it's very close to his last name. It's almost his last name. Exactly, you said. The first three letters of his last name were K-O-N. You, you said that's almost his last name exactly. Okay, I don't recall exactly what I said. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I said it, I said it. Okay. I'm glad we stopped this, because I thought it was your friend Kenny. Right. No, it was my friend Glenn Kinesky. No, it was Alan Kowicki. All right. Wait, listen to the rest of what happens here. And I'm I can sure barely, I, I, can, I don't know if I can bear it. Listen to how he throws out so many different Ka names, that, names that begin with Ka. Okay, now, Kenny, Kevin, Candy, there's some type of K-N or Kristen. Male and female. Who's this? <clears throat> that could be my friend who passed. That's that was his last name, almost to a T. Okay, to I know that tea. police officers carry the badge and the shield. Somebody showing me a shield, so they need to acknowledge the shield. So I'm bringing this up for you, also. Okay. okay. All right, hold on. Yeah. Was it a gladiator? <laughs> He said a police officer. He didn't say a gladiator. You know, just because he had a shield, there wasn't a... Is there a... Do you know a Captain America? Uh, or a Kenny uh, or a Kirsten America? Now you make it fun. A Kenny Maximus? No. My friend who passed was a police officer in New York City. And, again, 
how could you explain that? I mean, where, of all the people I would know, you probably the last person you would ever think of to have a police friend. I mean, come on. How, how, right, like, I don't hear you explaining that right, one away. How, but the I, fact that you saw a police shield for uh, this guy. He didn't say police shield, did yeah. he? Yeah. He said any kind of... Uh, he said he's showing a police shield. Am I correct? No, let, let's go back and hear it again. If he did, I missed it. Okay. All right. Take us back there. Thank you. I know that police officers carry the badge and the shield. Somebody's showing me a shield. So they need to acknowledge the shield. So I'm bringing this up for you also. Okay? okay. And I, I feel like there's some type of connection to either he passed with the impact or that there's something that affected his head where there was something that I would see as either being an explosion or something that affects his... This is an event that causes his passing. It's not exactly um, a healthcare thing from what I'm feeling. Okay. So the fact that you've already nodded to him being a policeman... Mm-hmm. Then he goes, and it's a friend, so he's died young. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's very likely that there's going to be, he says, impact. Okay. Right. He's which could cover, you know, a gunshot, anything. Accident. Uh, didn't he say a fiery explosion, too? All right, let's move on. Oh, but my friend died in a car crash on his way home from work one night, uh, from the, getting off uh, from... Uh -huh. Being a police officer, he got into a car accident. It was a big explosion. He was killed. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah, that's I'm awful. Sorry. I am too. But I mean, just okay with that knowledge now. Listening to that, it's All not right. so easy to debunk. Right. Yes, it's easy to debunk. All right, what does he? What's uh, can he say to you here? What do you get from him? He comes in and says he's uh, he's sorry he missed the wedding. I believe he says. All right, so you got married how long after? Seven years. Okay. And that's all he's bringing up. He one just day. missed it. No, he brings up the Wayne Newton. <sighs> All right, let's hear it. And something about sorry not being at the wedding, sorry not being at the event. There's a big festive, happy thing that was going on. I'm sorry that I wasn't there for that is kind of what's coming across. I do not get this as being a recent passing. I'm not feeling like he just passed. I feel like I'm gone a while. He's, he's been there for, you know, for a while. Um, and he's telling me to go back to 1984. I don't know what happened in 1984. Was he still here then? It was just about the time of his passing. Okay, mm -hmm. here's the situation. He says, I don't think this is a recent passing. You volunteer with your nods. You're right. It's not a recent passing. Yeah. I could yell back 15 years and say 1984. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course that's going to be. Was that the year? Very close to it. That was about the time we... And again, one of the things... That what didn't year make was it? I mean, you know, if it wasn't the exact year. Well, that was when we used to hang out together, 84. And he died right after we... We used to... Okay, one of the things that did not make the tape. Um, okay, he says, I'm seeing also connection between you two with initials. I'm seeing you guys at a flock of seagulls show. Am, <laughs> I, am I wrong about that? Did Kachigugu open for that one? Yeah. Cool. And he goes, I see you above him in some kind of capacity. We used to oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> we used to work at HFC, and I was his boss. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right, let's uh, keep going. All right. I don't know what happened in 1984. Was he still here then? It was just about the time of his passing. Okay, he's taking me back to around 1984. All right, I'll tell you what happened in 1984. Uh, a band called Frankie uh, went, goes to Hollywood, stormed the States, and made us all dance again. Relax. That's what happened. Don't do it. Right. When you want to get to it. Okay. Hey, that's it. Is there a Frankie, a Freddy, a Frida? Does someone named Frankie tell you to choose life? <laughs> what do Frankie say? Wait a minute. There's a Kevin or a Kirsten pushing your dad out of the way. Oh, come on. Because he wants to... I would be pissed. I want to talk to my dad. And I did. Okay. We'll continue with the tape here. This is Billy Staples on the John Edwards Show, Crossing Over. Okay, he's taking me back to around 1984. He's also indicating... Wayne Newton. <laughs> To me, I, they want me to say the name Wayne. They want me to say the name Newton. Or you've got some type of inside joke going on here with Wayne Newton. But... Okay, right there. Now, at the time you said that made no connection to you, right? Actually, Wayne Newton came through two different times during the reading. Yeah. And he goes, this was very important. Regarding both with this. your friend, Glenn? Yeah, both with my friend, Glenn. Let me ask you this. When did that uh, movie come out with this song? Ferris Bueller? Yeah. That's got to be around 1984. Maybe that's what he meant. You guys went to see this together. No, never saw it together. We used to drink a lot together. 
No, you? Yeah. I'm shocked. And <clears throat> the whole Wayne Newton thing, uh, after giving a little thought, I actually called the producers back the next day when I figured it out. Hoping that you could once again get on the show. No, just the, they say at the end of the show, if you know what it is, call us back, and they'll sometimes talk about it. It was one of the things that I used to do when I was drinking beer and stuff. I would eat Fig Newtons. And he used to always make fun of me for that, call me like a jerk and stuff that's disgusting. And then he got into it. We used to drink beer and eat Fig Newtons together all the time whenever we went out partying together. Wow. Now, you know, I don't know what's sadder. Is it? You lost a friend or that you lived a life like this? Or that you think of Fig Newton as Wayne Newton, the entertainer. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I used to call it. I used to call Wayne Newton Fig Newton when you he used to be on the Merv Griffin show. out of your way. Out of oh, your way my to God. prove... This Carney correct. Oh, uh, Billy, there's some straw. Could you grasp it for me? Come on. Then another yeah. thing. If I ever get into court, don't you be on my side. <laughs> Why? Because I believe in things? I believe I would believe in you as much as I believe in this. Please don't. I'm begging you not Your to. Your Honor, I believe in him. Delta. We would eat fig newtons. Handfuls at a time. Well, we got to take a break. We'll be back right. with more of this. Billy, I'll say this. you got a heart of gold. Thank you. The head needs some work, but you got a heart of gold. And I hope you come back to visit me sometime. <laughs> All right. Dan from Hoboken says, Beer and Fig Newtons. Did John Edwards predict the stomach stapling, too? <laughs> <laughs> he actually did say something at the very end. He goes, you're sure. about to make a big decision. Yeah, we were all thinking with that. 877-692-1027. Ron Fez Show. Billy Staples is a believer. We're on a Fez. Talking to Billy Staples tonight about his experience with John Edwards. You know him, of course, from the Crossing Over show. All right, how much more is on here on this tape we've been going through? One more minute. All right, let's give it a... Fezzy and I, I, I got to tell you, Billy, we're a little bit skeptical. Well... You know, I wish I could change your mind, but I don't think you guys are going to believe no matter what you heard. So, uh, you had your minds well, made up. We just, we're, what we're doing is we're going through the tape bit by bit, stopping it, stopping the interview that we watched with you, and just pointing out how someone can pull these things off. Right. I know you're absolutely amazed, and you're like, where could he get that from? We're just trying to show you some of the ways he could get that. All right, can I? But you know what? I'll tell you something else. I've seen coin tricks that I, don't, I can't figure it out, but I know it's a trick. Okay. Well, see, that's the difference. I know this wasn't a trick, or I don't believe in my heart and soul that this was a trick. I mean, like, just okay, let me let me ask you a question. I mean, how would the police shield come up regarding my friend? I mean, I mean, that's all right. Let's move on, though. Okay, okay I'm just... bring up the police shield constantly. Well, it's uh, I haven't yeah, it hasn't been explained away. That's the only reason I bring it up. All right, so you want us to explain it away? That's what you want with us? Well, no, it's just that I would like to, you know, there's other stuff that you is easily, <coughs> you can easily. All right, let's, let's get into this. Though. Sure, no let's problem. Let's keep the show moving along. No problem. All right, here's more of Billy on John Edwards. To me, I, they want me to say the name Wayne, they want me to say the name Newton, yeah, or you've Wayne got some Newton. type of inside joke going on here with Wayne Newton, but I have no idea what this means. Now, who's the fireman with all the smoke? Who had all the... Oh, my God. My uncle. Passed. Yeah. Okay, he's here. He's telling him to call him Smokey. He's got, like, all the smoke. All right, hold on. <laughs> Your uncle, what? the fireman. Correct. Was his nickname Smokey? Not that I'm aware of. We're down, we're we gonna do what they say can't be done? We've got a long way to go. Come, Smokey! Time to get there. I'm you got a Smokey in your tail. Yeah, good buddy. Uh, I'm coming in from heaven. This is a Smokey. I'm looking for that big ass Billy Zables. <laughs> All right, so why do you think he said call him Smokey? Well, it could have been his nickname at the firehouse or something. He right. lived there. <laughs> I'm sure. That would be like me calling Fez Jokey. All right, Rob, let me explain. This is an uncle who lives. <laughs> and my friend, radio <laughs> Hi, Hey, radio <laughs> I'm oh, Jokey. All right, I see, see how a little I see your point. that guys at a firehouse ain't going to call each other Smokey. Hey, microphone how you doing? Hey, helmet head. <laughs> you putting that helmet on your head again? Hey, heat miser, what's going down? Where's the uh, big truck guy? Hey, hey, big rubber boots. Is hey, uh, boy. what time siren he coming in today? Full slider. What's the hat? Again, he lived very far away. Um, Who, Smokey? My uncle, my <laughs> uncle Laurie. 
Lori? Yeah, the shot for Lawrence. They used to call him Lori. I'd rather go with Smokey. I would me. definitely want Smokey if I was a man and my name was Lori. By the way, a cop was here. I don't know if you know him. Shooty? <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, I know him. He's a friend of Tickety. Yeah. He came in with Badgie. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, it's crazy night. It's a crazy night. I went to my baker. Breddy? Oh, yeah. He's nice. You know who introduced him uh, to me? Who's that? My tailor, Zoe. All right, let's get back to Smokey. That's not his name, right? Again, I don't know. It very well Here's possibly another thing. could be. Uh, uh, you're from Long Island. Correct. You know cops and firemen. Yeah, right? this, this fireman lived north of Buffalo, just north right, Canada. But, but I'm just saying how the guy's fishing. Okay, you're friends with cops, you might be friends with firemen. Let's right. get into this. All right. And now, did your grand, uh, your, your uncle, did he die in a fire? No, he did not. All right, so you see, this guy's seen him surrounded by smoke. Again, it comes as an image. Could this it be the Uncle Nature Boy? Woo! Do you know a 13-time champion? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Belty. Championship Belty. All, All right. right, let's get back into it. Here's more of Billy Staples on John Edwards. Passed. Yeah. Okay, he's here. He's telling him to call him Smokey. He's got, like, all this smoke all around him. He's oh making, like, this God. is how he passes. Does he know your mom? Yeah. He's telling me to say hi to him. Now, you just, he just said to you, this is how he passes. He's surrounded by smoke. And you just told us that's not how he died. Why didn't you correct him on this? Well, because, again, it happens very quickly at the time. No, right, no, the guy's I, going like a bat out of hell. Yeah. You're sitting there nodding on the tape. Right, and that's all. It was like At the time, they said, just answer yes or no, and that was it. And <laughs> that, no, that would have been time for a no. No. <laughs> well, or uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. It, again, I'm trying it's to... An it comes through in images, not in, like, direct quotes saying, hey, this is my Uncle Larry from uh, uh, Falconer, New York, you know. Watch your language. Yeah, please. All right, let's go. Yeah. He's telling me to say hi to mom. Is that your mom's brother-in-law? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's like your mom's sister's husband. How is this connected? My my <laughs> my. <f> Why <laughs> you? You just said brother-in-law. Uh, yeah. How is this connected? Well, there are many different ways of being a brother-in-law. Why does he care? <laughs> just to, he's just showing that he's right on the money. And he is it, not. He is. It, it, Smokey. It, he died in smoke, and he didn't, right? No, he did not die in smoke. How did that, he die? I am aware of. I really don't know. Did he smoke too much? Oh, you yeah, don't know how he smoker. died. You don't know how he died. And yet he's I'm close doing to... it to you. Yeah. You see, look, I have found a way for you to rationalize the smoking. No. Did he smoke a lot? Yes. <gasps> it's just, it's just, it fits in, Fez. Yes. Well, let's go. And it's I'm not ridiculous. getting 600 bucks an hour. Okay, it's like your mom's sister's husband. How is this connected? My 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 father's sister's husband. So okay. it's a brother-in-law. All right, because he's telling me that he... All right, so I need he to went acknowledge and he screwed that up. No, he said brother-in-law. He said, then he got how they were connected wrong. He said, it's your sister's husband or your mother's. Uh, but again, he was right there. He called it a brother-in-law. Uh, let's go. I need to acknowledge uh -huh. to mom that he's the sister's husband. That's right. how he's come across to me, which takes a lot of energy. And he's calling out to Lenny. Lindy. Lin Lenny. There's an L. Yeah. There's like an L connection that he's telling uh, me to acknowledge. That? Linda, my wife. How does he know her? From being married to me. You mean very close? No. Now, um, all right. Bill he's me. been to Linda. <laughs> he's been to Lindy's? <laughs> yeah, Delicious. Yeah, love the cheesecake. Now, why would an uncle that you barely know, you don't even know how he died, why would he call out to your wife? Uh, I your think, second wife. I think because he never met her. <laughs> <laughs> he, never... he never met her. Why did he call out Al Dukes' name? <laughs> he hasn't met a lot of people. But he knew about her. He never got a chance to meet her before <sighs> he, she, he passed. How did he pass again in the Ring of Fire? I'm sure there's someone Smoking. named Ching Lee in China he's never met either. Why didn't they get a shout-out from the beyond? Because I'm not married to Ching Lee. <laughs> Anymore. Uh, that was the first <laughs> wife. Yeah. There's like an L connection that he's telling me to acknowledge. Also like to drink a bit from what he's showing me. Um, uh, he was a big drinker? No, that's an edit. That goes back again to the stepfather. <laughs> oh, the stepfather who... Now, all right, so we've never, on this tape, we've never acknowledged that you got contacted by a stepfather. But yet they've used the thing with the books mm -hmm. yeah. and the education and now the drinking to make it sound like he has more information about two other spirits. I think it was more of just filling up time. This thing is F. <laughs> you had 20 minutes and they're cutting it to seven. And Why they, did you need more time? And if the guy wants to fill up time, tell him to pause every once in a while <laughs> so we can understand what the F Mr. Coke Motormouth is talking about.
<laughs> well, one of the things that John did say, he goes, um, you didn't come here to see him, but he just wanted to acknowledge that he's here, and that was my stepfather. Okay. Because uh, going to see my, my deceased stepfather was not one of my big uh, goals of this session. All right. But he just, he did pop in. Yes, because he's hanging around with your real dad, which has got to be a comfortable no, in the yeah, afterlife. I can guarantee you that. I don't know. Well, they're both friends with through Smokey. <laughs> Smokey, introduce them. Call me Smokey. <laughs> Sells a farming. All right, ready? Also like to drink a bit from what he's showing me, um, but enjoyed life. I feel like he enjoyed life while he's here. And he's telling me that you're not here for him, but he had to jump in and say hi. Right, hold on. That's if all this, the stepfather right there. If this makes no sense, why are you just gasping and... Because I never expected yeah. uh, people, my stepfather. Amazing! I know. <laughs> you just said he's not the one that drinks. No, no. But that whole, from that moment when he says the one who drinks till the fact that when he says, even though you're not here to speak to him, he just wanted to acknowledge his presence. That whole little clip is all about my stepfather. Right. That's, that's oh, that's, that's more about your stepfather, not Smokey Joe. Correct. Right. Smokey had already left with the band at that time. <laughs> they were about to win some money. He was left with Jerry Reed. I'd have slapped your mama just for having you. Oh, my uncle. Hey, Smokey, we better get on the road here, buddy. I think I've got some bugs on my bum. I want to get the hell out of here. Shoot as I can. Oh, boy, that bandage is about going. All right, let's go back to the tape. If you insist, they will burn it. I don't care. One way or another, I just want to keep it Smokey up my ass. Uh, Smokey? Uncle Smokey? Uh. And, uh, and the last one, I came back as a bandit myself. <laughs> now I come back as uh, Butter Reynolds' old football coach, Bobby Batten. Let's go. And he's telling me that you're not here for him, but he had to jump in and say hi. This is kind of like what he wanted to do. Um, wait, wait a second. Who's the Nancy or the N? All right, hold on. I'll tell you who the Nancy is. Billy sitting there crying <laughs> like a baby the whole time. Is there a Nancy boy <laughs> that apparently the entire spirit world wants to talk to? You're the effing Nancy, you fruit. <laughs> there would have been a dry high eye on any of you guys if you went through what I went through. Please, I'd have been screaming and crying to get out of there. <laughs> Open the door! You talk too fast! You talk too fast! Or the N N Ann, not Ann. It's like mm. Next, my wife's mother's name is Nancy. Okay. She's not passed. That's okay. <laughs> uh, now living human beings are coming into your reading. No, no. See, this is what you guys don't understand. You know that you don't watch the show. You don't know how it works. The deceased, the people from the beyond, will mention people who are living now. The proof. Right, who is the one who mentioned your your mother-in-law? Uh, yeah, who's so Smokey? interested in Mrs. Staples' mother? That comes up next. Okay. That comes up next. All right. My wife could explain that better. Please don't. I can't bear it. <laughs> I can't bear it. Next, my wife's mother's name is Nancy. Okay. I mean, she's not passed. That's okay. That's just their way of telling me where we're at. Okay. It's their way of like saying, let, let, let us all straight. So I have somebody, whether it be a younger male, a cousin, or somebody also in, in her family who's trying to come through um, and acknowledge. They're talking about somebody either planning a trip now, going to either the Caribbean. What? No, I'm saying that's where it ended with talking about the, one of uh, my, my wife's cousins had passed. And that was coming, they were acknowledging Nancy, my mother in law, my wife's mother. All right, what were they related? Nancy was there? You were at a mother? cocktail party with their dead people. Yeah. All right. As far as I know, again, that's the side of the family I'm not too aware of. So now <laughs> dead people who you don't know are showing up. Hey, you know what, Ron? It's all opportunity, man. <laughs> You don't have opportunity every day to reach the living world, so if there's an opening, if the portal's there, these people are going to grab it. <laughs> Thank you for being the portal right. between dimensions. The porthole. <laughs> so special. Planning a trip now, going to either the Caribbean, Florida, or something that's coming up down south. I'm going to say that this is Florida, and I'm going to say it's Disney World, because they give me this feeling of I'm going by where the mouse is, I'm going with the ears, I'm being dropped down there, and I'm seeing something that would be upstate, out of state. All right, now, the Disney World thing mm -hmm. c completely confused me. This cousin of your wife's is screaming Disney World? No, that's two different, two, different, complete, two different complete thoughts there. It was like the cousin that just wanted to acknowledge and goes, then I'm seeing a trip. It was, uh, like, it was like completely... Coming up. He said coming up, but it's actually one that took place already. What happened? <laughs> then, that, then that's not the trip. Yeah, it is. Again, if it's, it's one that's coming up, then one that's already happened, isn't it? All right, Fez. Oh, hold me, on. Okay. Ask me if I uh, have a trip coming up. Ronnie, uh, trip coming up? Wow. I just <laughs> took a vacation last summer. <laughs> See? 877-692-1027. We're Ronnie Fez. 
Tell me, uh, let me explain something. Name an American who has not been to Disney World. It might as well have said you ever been out trick or treating. Yes, Everybody, I have. Everybody's been to Disney World. Uh, I just went trick or treating on the thirty first. Put it this way, I was thirty. I was in my late thirties before I went to Disney World. But so. everybody <laughs> goes there. It's so funny about that. You wear mouth ears. <laughs> yeah, I did. All right, Horde King has written in that his daughter's listening tonight and wants to know what's wrong with Billy. And you can tell her absolutely nothing. <laughs> Why are children crying now? Why are children that are listening to the show now right, breaking you, down in tears? When uh, you went to Disney World, mm -hmm. were you driving with a smoke and a bandit down there? <laughs> All right, so he says you've got a trip coming up. You gasp and start crying because at one point in your life you'd been to Disney World. No, we went to Disney on my honeymoon. Most people do. Now, oh, which, most people do. Most I'm people telling you, with little kids, my little brother. No, did. a lot of single, uh, you know, a lot of people of all ages go there. Yeah, it they sell packages. I know. All right, you can get married at Disney World right around in that damn pumpkin. I know that. What ghost? I drew the line on that one. <laughs> what ghost brought up Disney World? That's what I don't understand. That's that that my Casper. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to love it. Billy, this is just nuts. No, it's not nuts, Ron. It's everything you're doing, you're just trying to make this guy. But there are so many things in my life that he could have touched on, but yet everything was whatever very he specific. Whatever he threw out, you would agree with and say it happened. Okay, plus, you wait. You guys throw something he, out to me. Let's see what happens. Throw plus, everything out. he threw out touches everybody's life. Who doesn't know a cop? Who uh, died in a fiery crash? You said fiery crash. No, he said fiery crash. <laughs> he said impact. He found out that a cop... That's not a fiery crash. An okay. impact is not a fiery crash. He said crash. a fiery impact. And he goes... Oh, he... I'm not going to go through it again. Okay. I, I just want to end this, Fez. It's killing right. me. And when he's not going to understand... Let me just say yeah. that if a cop, a man who is a police officer, dies young, for that man to interpret it, there's a very good likelihood that it was in some sort of accident or in the line of duty. So you th you're telling me you think he's just playing the odds on all this? I'm saying he's throwing anything out there and you're leaping at it. <laughs> all right. The last thing on this tape will all prove right, my point. All right, let's the plant it. reference. Oh. And I'm seeing something that would be upstate, out of state, not in the city area from what they're showing me. All right. That That's, my uncle. All right. That, uh, that includes the entire planet <laughs> Earth. That was my uncle who we referred to. We also talked about the Great Lakes area that was put I'm... in the wrong spot. <laughs> So they took something else and it and stuck it back in there. That's smoky talk. Yeah, that now. was that would be the smoky. Oh, area. this is the most confusing, ridiculous thing I've ever heard. All right. Wait, wait till we get to the steps. They trees all around this. Oh yeah. They're trying to show me a house with a porch, where there's like two or three steps going up, and either the second step or one of the steps are broken, or the wood's off, or it's splintered, and they're telling me to tease you about when is this going to be fixed. Proves it right there. What are you talking about? My wife and I had an apartment with an outside staircase. The second step was broken, and she always busted my chops to fix it. Was it upstate? Was it out of state? No. <laughs> it was in Lovetown. All right, and, I mean, all right. <laughs> and Billy, Jeez. this was before you were stapled. You were 400 pounds. Most of the steps you were on at that point were <laughs> broken. But it was only Jeremy the... Coleman's thinking of making you pay for a staircase out here. But it was only the second step that was broken, and that is specifically what he mentioned. Honey, how many homes need repairs? How many need the second step fixed? <sighs> I could have say said a point... huge amount of them <laughs> need the steps fixed. When it's a 400-pound man living there. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. If anything, he should have said to you, you need a ramp. You yes. were really big then. Yeah, I was very heavy then. Yes. All right. And they're telling me to tease you about when is this going to be fixed. Well, when are we going to fix this? So I don't know if your wife is saying, fix this, this needs to be painted, this needs to be sanded. And then we can tease her about the tree of the plant dying. There's something about the tree of the plant being dead. Right there. That is a conversation that only took place between my wife and myself. Yeah. Okay? No one else knew about it. Uh, we were, everyone, whenever we would have a conversation about having kids or something, I used to joke with her, how can we have kids? You can't even keep a plant alive for six months. Here's the thing. Bless you both for not having children. And I mean that with all my heart. Bless you both. You've done the right thing. I feel we should write you a check for not doing it. All right. So what you've basically gotten here is 
Let's tease a man about home repairs. <laughs> Let's tease a woman about growing plants. Next thing you're going to tell me is Bob Vila came through, right? You, no, not at all. You don't think there isn't a woman out there that's had a, that's had a dead plant? But didn't say dead, just teasing about the plants. He right. Wasn't specific. <laughs> but exactly, you got specific with this other thing. If he would have said, look, your wife wants to have a baby, and you don't, so you tell her uh, there's no plants. Now, all he does is bring up plants. You're, oh, oh my <laughs> God. Oh, you guys are just so... Seriously! Oh, come on! He hasn't said these things. Yes, he did. It's right there in front of you, and you're failing to say it. It's so clear as, as day. It's vague, Billy. Oh. It's vague. Fezzy, if it was you, I, you know... Yes, I've killed a plant before. He would have nailed me. He would have nailed it perfectly. Because I killed a plant one this time. This was, was probably one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. Uh, that's I, sad. <laughs> no, it really isn't. When you find it, I... You what know, about the coming vacation to Disney World you had three years ago? <laughs> You're looking forward to doing that? Again? That you already did? Well, the other thing is we had planned on going back there for our fifth anniversary, oh, but we geez. never made it. Oh, oh. that's amazing. <laughs> All right, that's the end of this. We'll talk right. to Mrs. Staples next, who... Uh, okay. Uh, can prove the, everything. Well, who can prove it all? All right. I saw her at the end of it crying with you, and uh, yeah. the two of you were just bawling. And but Billy, do you think we had any points? I mean, I know we're not going to sway you mm -hmm. and your belief system that this was legit and it really happened. But do you notice that we made any points? Yeah, you did make points. I mean, you can uh, take a look at anything that you don't believe in and dissect it. I mean, you don't believe in it. And you was, you're basically thinking that everything is on a logic principle, where if you just shoot for the averages, that if somebody my age lost a friend and he died in a horrible crash, or, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at the, you're playing the odds on it, you know. And, All right, and Billy. when you have a simpleton nodding at you the whole time, agreeing oh. with anything you say, oh. <laughs> that it really, really helps. Now, after we pointed out all these things, Billy, it means nothing to you. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. That's cool. 877. Six nine two one zero two seven. One zero two seven W N E W. We're Ron and Fez. Ron Bennington. Fez Watley with you tonight. All right. Heckler wrote in on the answer feedback. Note to self: Pick up Billy Magic Eight Ball for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Been talking to Billy Staples, who had a session with John Edwards from the Crossing Over Show. This is a couple of years ago when they shot one of the first episodes of it. The first episode. And Billy, completely enlightened by his reading. Sure. Mm -hmm. Still am. Still believe it 100%. Running a, more than a little skeptical of how this works. Especially after we had the chance to go over it with you. Yeah, and you really didn't prove anything differently to me. All right, we're going to end this up, but your wife wanted to talk to us first. Hi, Mrs. Staples. Boys, boys, boys. I don't know. Smokey says hi. Smokey says hi. I, I just wanted to let you know, first of all, um, when I went with Billy, I went into this thing totally skeptical because it's totally against my religion to believe in this. And I, I like says, I'm Lutheran. Oh, jeez. So you honestly think Martin Luther King is coming back one day? Well, I wish he would have come back to me, but... Oh. Not Martin Luther <laughs> King. I guess it wasn't my turn to overcome. All right, so uh, Lutherans don't go for this, Fez? We're not supposed to believe it biblically, spiritually. It's in the Bible. We're not supposed to believe it. It gets in the realm of sorcery when someone's yeah. practicing no, it. No, wasn't so, there psychics in the Bible or soothsayers no, and prophets, stuff? No, there's prophets, and those prophets. are God-inspired prophets. There's a difference. All right. But the point was, I went with Billy. I was totally skeptical, and we did not talk to anybody. I swear to you. We, we were in a little room. We watched television. We didn't talk to anybody. We didn't discuss anything. And the things he came out with, the things that are not on the tape were more astounding. I wish they had, but it was the first show. So they edited a lot of things. They've learned a lot of stuff since then. There's a lot of stuff on there that is like personal stuff that I will not discuss on the air involving Billy's family, his relationships with his daughter, things like that, that were not brought up on the show and like on the air. And I mean, the fact that he got my cousin. I, I've had people in my life die that I have total peace with, that I don't need to communicate with. But so I had a this was strong enough to turn you against your own religion? Not turned against my religion. It did enable me. I went and got John's book. Uh -huh. And I read about the John's book. The good book. book. And, huh? The, the book of John. John. <laughs> yeah, the book of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, I, I read his book, and the one thing, I mean, skeptical or not, 
The one thing that's really positive that did come out and the one caller pointed out is that because of, of this door being open, whatever you want to believe, it enabled a lot of relationships in our lives to be mended. You know, because I don't want to wait till someone's dead before I have to, like, start going to a psychic to say, listen, I'm really sorry that I didn't get to say goodbye to you. And Billy didn't even talk about it. He talked about Billy's whole, I believe, with this whole thing with him getting the job with you guys. Please. Please? (laughs) If I would have known that, why couldn't he have warned us? He talked about, (laughs) he doesn't predict the future because he's not, like, a fortune teller. And he talked about how, like, he did see that Billy was going into a field involving with communications and computers and radio. And and he hadn't even started air sick at that point, I believe. So He couldn't talk him out of it? <laughs> no, I didn't want to. I, what, I if, what if he had said, I see you being air sick? <laughs> well, air sick air sick's a profitable business, so... Unlike this. Unlike this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Mrs. Staples. Well, I really wish you would read the book, and you know, I can't I'm, imagine. I'm sorry that you feel the way that you do, but it, it, I mean, there are fake people out there. Yes, John Edwards. Okay, well, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I, I would love to see you guys before Christmas, and I hope that you know you you uh, change your mind about this. Okay. Okay. Thanks, right. Mrs. Staples. Bye, Sarah. All right, bye, bye, Ron. And here's our chance to say goodbye, Mrs. Staples. <sighs> I'm glad you guys believe. I'm glad it gave you something, Billy. Well, it did, Ron. She it seems did. more touched than you are, Billy. I didn't realize you were, she was so into the Bible. My God. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. I was just like, wow. Now that's you quoting scripture, crazy. for God's sake. <laughs> now you think that's crazy. I was never a big uh, religious guy to begin with, so that's no. nice. I know, I know. Seriously? Seriously. All I'd have to get you into is one tent. You'd be down on your knees praying to be bored again. Someone will be on an orange sheet collecting money at JFK. uh, Emptying that wallet, just dumping it into whatever basket they bring by. (laughs) Free last! Free last! Look, Ronnie, they healed my arm. Was it broken? No, but look how good it works. All right. No more talk about all this stuff. Ugh. Well, Billy, you're a character. I'll say, I'll give you that much. You are a character. Well, and thank you for uh, listening to it and playing it. So that was people... enjoyable. Yeah, it was enjoyable. I never laughed so high. Oh. And you are adorable on this tape. Yeah. You and, got a heart of gold and huge and a head of cotton. <laughs> you're just lovable. And when you just took your little chubby fingers and went, put it over your mouth in disbelief. Yeah, I, I, I cute. I liked you better at 400 pounds. <laughs> Is there any way to get you unstapled? No. Yeah, there is, but I'm not going to do it. Let's do it. Get the staple puller. No. <laughs> I don't want to be that fat again. You saw my pants inside. What the hell? How big they were? I know. It's so cool. <laughs> Never again.